that feels good. Oh, this is scary. It's hot in here. That will be my window. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh God. My van build has cost me. <sighs> Welcome back. Today is the day that I've been most nervous about. I am installing two windows. The reason that I'm so nervous for this day is because when I was talking to a buddy of mine that builds out vans, he did mention there was a giant bug. Okay, it flew away. He mentioned that Max Air fans are usually pretty okay to install yourself. And he did mention that with windows, um, you can total your van, putting giant holes in the side. So uh, let's just hope that that does not happen. Here are the windows. This is my first time looking at them. Today I'm installing two motion windows from Peninsula Glass and they're specific for my Ram Pro Master and they come with the specific foam ceiling that fits the windows perfectly for this brand. It also comes with hardware for it, which I'll show you. Oh my gosh, it even has my name on it. Cute. No more procrastinating. Step one, making the template. Each window comes with two pieces. You have the actual window, and then you have a clamp ring. The clamp ring is gonna be what holds the window in place. This is the piece that you want to take a template of. And I just cut out the side of the box that the windows came in. I'm going to take this part of my window and trace the outside of that inner part. All right. I ended up doing a template over here instead just to avoid some of this puckering in the cardboard. Here we go. Here's my template. All right, template is made. Now what I'm gonna do is take off these supports in my van. So if you're doing this in a Ram Pro Master, these supports need to come out. If you are doing this in a Sprinter van, and I believe a Transit as well, the supports do not stick out as much, so you can just cut right through them. These supports are held on by these two small metal tabs on either side, and then just this stuff here. So if we can take the support away from these two metal tabs, it will come off. So I'm gonna use a chisel and a hammer and get to it. Not too shabby. It's actually not that bad. That is done. Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna do it to the top. Okay, that was actually quite easy. Now I am just going to clean up those little metal tabs and I'm going to chisel those off so they're not hanging around. Ugh. It's hot in here. Woo. Oh, that's the smoothest one. All right, it's only about 110 degrees. So what I just did, I figured out where I wanted my bed. So I measured how much space I need and I'm deciding to have my window about a half an inch lower than this. I've made a few different marks here across and that's where my template will sit so that that final panel that will actually hold my window in will have enough space underneath my support. So my next step here is to tape my template to where I want my window to be, and then trace it. The measuring is important because you can't really use a level um, unless you're on perfectly level ground, which does not make sense. It is drawn onto my actual real life van craziness. <laughs> oh God. 
one other note you can download and print off a little circular piece of paper from motion windows on their website it can help you make the correct curve on the corners when you're transferring your template to the outside of the van i did not do that but what i am going to do is just use the template We'll see how it works. Next up then is to drill the holes and transfer myself and all my things to the outside of my van so I can actually start the cutting process. How you wanna do this is where the straight line meets the curve, you wanna drill a hole here and then another one here. Same thing down here, 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 all the way around. So eight holes total. I really hope my template is correct. It looks correct. I just don't wanna put this up. All right, I'm just gonna make sure. I'm just gonna grab a window. Make sure that this is right. Over there is good. That all lines up. Oh, this is scary. I think I'm gonna do one across the top as well, just to, just to make me feel better. Okay, I, this is really scary. So in order to protect um, my van just a little bit more, I'm just going to tape this sheet below here and then wrap it up um, above it just to catch all of the metal shavings. I'm just gonna do it right below where my first cut will be. <coughs> Jeez. I see all these holes that I made. So I'm gonna line up the template. Oh yeah, we're good. I was looking for my Sharpie. It's in my hat. All right, that will be my window. I'm gonna talk through the cutting pattern that I'm gonna use because my goal is to reduce flappiness at all costs. I don't want a lot of vibration and I got this idea from Motion Windows from their website. My goal is to leave these two middle pieces still intact. With this pilot hole, I'm going to drill a bigger hole so that my jigsaw blade can fit. And then I am going to cut this curve here, tape it, and then cut into the middle, but leave a little bit of this intact. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'll make this bigger so my jigsaw blade can fit. I'm gonna cut all of here, tape this so it doesn't flap around, and then come in here to the middle and leave a chunk here in the middle. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing on both sides of here, bringing this in so at the end, there's just two little pieces that I'll have to cut out rather than having this entire piece cut and flapping around. So I'm going to drill out these holes first, the size that I need for my jigsaw blade, and then I'm gonna start cutting. I'm gonna put tape, like double up on tape just around where I'm gonna cut just to protect it. All right, so I ended up going back to Home Depot to get a different jigsaw. The one that we have was from the ReStore for $9. So I'm gonna hopefully finish up this cut and we'll see how it goes with the new jigsaw. Sweet. This cuts like lettuce. for me to saw this way. So I'm just gonna do another hole here so I can connect these two and go this way with my right hand. Let's hope this last one goes well. Okay, that one is done. Oh, this is so exciting. Now I'm proud of that. Oh my gosh. Okay, don't drop the window. It fits. There are some pieces of metal sticking up or there's just loose metal, so I'm just gonna make sure everything is nice and not pokey. All right, once again, with the exposed metal, I'm just gonna paint it. All 
right, I'm gonna let that dry. I really hope it does not rain. It looks to me like rain. Sweet. Just to be conservative, when I drilled the holes the first time, I drilled them to the very inside of the traced line and then when I cut it out, I also uh, cut to the inside of the line and it worked out actually really well. There's even still just like a little bit of wiggle room with the window. It's not too big and it's not a super tight fit either. So that's what I would recommend from my one window that I did. So since these windows were powder coated, they recommend that you use some lacquer thinner to clean them before you lay down the foam that they provide for you keep the paper on it until you hit the corners and then when you hit the corners you can peel it off and it'll stretch a lot easier once you get back around one full time you want to overlap the foam where it met just a little bit to make sure that there's a really tight seal somebody else so I asked Jake to help me he's gonna put the window in and then from the inside I will put the plate on and screw it all in so another little trick is to spray down the foam with some glass cleaner before you put it in the window that way it's not going to stick immediately and there's going to be a little bit of space for wiggle room or wiggle room if we need to adjust it whatever you do don't want to drop it please Huh, confused right now. See what I don't understand. Ah, okay, I see. I was nervous because the hole was definitely a little bit bigger than the window, but now I'm understanding now that I'm actually screwing it in, that, uh, that's okay. I'm starting with the right side. So I took off the little adhesive strip that looked like this on the frame, so you can tell this is flopping around. So I'm gonna tighten down the right side first so that I can bring the left side in and make sure it's really tight. All right, I think this actually is going okay. Nice. What's in there? Nice. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the window is in. Now I need to do the second one. All right, on to the second window. Perfect. Now I'm going to make just a few of these holes bigger and then I'm gonna start cutting. Same process as last time. put the window in while I put the screws in and, and finish it up. So 
here we go. Here's the final window install. All right, I'm gonna start with your left side again. Where did I just put those screws? Oh. Okay, so the right side This part of the van build was definitely nerve-wracking and scary and also something that I'm really really proud of after the fact. These windows from Peninsula Glass were really quite easy to install. I would definitely recommend them for anybody that is wanting to do windows by themselves. Let's go over the cost of the build so far. So far with everything that I've done, including the rust protectant, the partition removal, the two max air fans, and now the windows, my van build has cost me $1,248.70. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. This whole thing has been an incredible learning experience. This has been fun and frustrating and exciting. And I think I'm going to do the floor next. Yep, 